Bass Hole Studios in Hollywood, California. California. You're listening to I'm an Asshole with Doug Bass. We've all been one, so let's talk about it. Now, here's your host, Doug Bass. He's an asshole, sir. He's an asshole. Hey, everyone. Welcome to I'm an Asshole. My name's Doug Bass. You guys are here enjoying the show. We thank you for tuning in. As always, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, on the YouTube channel, at Doug Bass Comedy, Spotify, all those good places. We appreciate it. We have a great show today. Uh, Our guest today is David Schoner. David works at the New Jersey Motion Picture and Television Commission in New Jersey. I've known him since I was in high school. He's a producer. Uh, He is a great guy. His uh, new project is Arthur Futuro. It's a half-hour comedy series about a middle school student who... uh, My dogs are going to bark, of course, and ruin this. Uh, It's all good. Uh, All right, we'll get into that in a little bit. David, how are you? Hey, Doug. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's good to see you. I haven't talked to you in a while. It's it's been a while. How are you holding up during uh, during everything's going on in L.A.? Uh, you know what? We're we're doing our best here. Um, yeah, everything's kind of shut down here. Um, I know things in New Jersey might be more open than they are here. A um, little more open. Yeah, but, uh, yes, they yeah, are. It's yeah. LA, LA, LA is very dark. I know you've been here, you know, multiple times, and if you see if you saw it during this condition right now, you'd be a little surprised. I think um, it's it's very weird, very dark place. It's kind it's kind of like very- out of a movie. <laughs> Well, you know, maybe it's a little Jokerish. It it is, it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of uh, Joker, Joker shot in New Jersey, right? The in yeah, New, Newark, New for, Jersey. T- for ten days, right. they uh, they cre- they used Newark, they used downtown Newark, and created a uh, Gotham City. Right. So, so you work for the New Jersey Film Commission, um, which uh, you organize all the shooting of movies, TV, commercial that goes on in the state of New Jersey for the mo- most part. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I am the associate director of the New Jersey Film Commission, and I'm I kind of describe our position, my position as boots on the ground. I am the moderator, mediator, arbiter that go between uh, film companies and local entities within the, the state. And the job is just to make stuff happen and facilitate it. Right. It's an important job. Um, film film started filmmaking started in New Jersey. Uh, so being from New Jersey, we're always very proud of that, I would say. Um, and it was also great meeting you in high school because you, you got me on like my first like real film set. Like, you know, That's it, was, right. it was a Harrison Ford movie called Random Hearts. No one really yeah. saw it. No one saw it, but, um, it was, it was cool to like, just be there. You know, you're in high school and all of a sudden you're like eating lunch next to Harrison Ford and, uh, Sydney Pollack. And you're like, Sydney Pollack. Yes. Like, we, yeah, we wait, we waited in the lunch Sydney line Pollock. with him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, it was a, I always remember it. It was, it was a great moment for me and, like you know getting on the set of the sopranos all that kind of stuff like it was just it was just like an awesome experience like you always like you know you know bending over to just be like come on the set come on come on hang out like learn you know meet these people learn learn, just hang out as a kid you're like oh this is amazing you know it's hollywood east new jersey it is you know the biggest thing i find doug all the time is that um at least when i was trying to break into the film industry or do something in entertainment let's just go entertainment is that no one would give you the opportunity no one would give you that time of day and i always tried to as i went through my career is to try to correct that and it was amazing when when i met you in high school and and you you know i could see you had this amazing talent you had this amazing desire and passion and i was like yeah someone's got to give him opportunity because they don't uh, they don't do that people yeah. just don't give opportunities that's true and i and i've always appreciated that and um yeah it, it was always an interesting learning experience just every time you'd step on set as a kid even if you weren't doing anything you're just hanging around watching people you know make these these films and you know top actors at their craft you know not many people have access to that at a young age like that so it was it was very cool and i always appreciated it um so filmmaking is back in new jersey now it was kind of there was kind of a dead uh lull for a while when uh what's his name uh chris christie was in office right um so in now previous administration so, yeah so now so now so now it's thriving again right like things are things are filming everywhere in new jersey 
It is on fire. You know, the great thing is that when Governor Murphy, uh, one of the things he promised when he was running for office and now that he is the governor of the state is he passed a film and TV tax incentive. And that is, as you know, that is what drives filmmakers to come to your state and want to film in your state. If you don't have an incentive, you will not get the volume of film production that uh, an industry needs to uh, sustain itself. Right. And, and you guys have top movies, top actors. You, you, Steven Spielberg was there filming his West Side Story remake, right? Yeah, um, that's correct. Commercials. You, you're having commercials shot at a Cedar Grove High School where I went to school <laughs> now. That, that's yes. become like a little like uh, Tyler Perry studio almost in a sense. <laughs> yeah. I would say. Um, that's amazing. Like that all these things are shooting at the high school now. I find that, you know, very, very cool. Well, well, the great thing about filming in our, you know, the school district and the high school is that uh, the administration gets it, the superintendent gets it. And obviously we're always balancing uh, students' needs um, and what is going on with the kids. It's always about that. And there's always opportunities to make money because what we do is when we do these things at the high school and in other schools in the district is we buy stuff that the Board of Ed or do stuff for the kids that the Board of Ed can't afford to pay for, that right. there's no money for. And so just to go beat this up a little bit more is we brought in female empowerment program for all the uh, young ladies at the high school another time. We buy Unity Day t-shirts so that everyone can be together and be supportive of each other. We will buy water fountains because, you know, these water fountains, these water filtration fountains are expensive. Yeah. And so all this stuff pays for it and a uh, little breakfast offices prior to obviously the pandemic. Um, so it's a great way to fund stuff in the district where there is no money for it. That's great, especially replacing water fountains in the high school. I mean, yeah, like, like everyone wants filtered water. Now, I remember drinking out of those things and like, you literally have to put your lips on the thing to get a drop of water. Um, yeah. So that's that's no good. More. No, no more. No more. No more. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's great. And and this is kind of I would I would guess that this is a um, the first time that this is kind of something like this is happening, like. Uh, extra money coming in from film production at the school directly and then being, you know, deposited, being dispersed in different ways to buy things for the school that, yeah, they weren't able to afford or they'd have to, everyone would have to vote on and some people wouldn't agree and then it wouldn't pass yes. or whatever. So this is like, you know, a first time thing, I would think, for the high school. It is. And it's, it's, it's kind of a radical thing because. Uh, film companies need to film in, in schools and, you know, that's part of the content, whether it's story wise or not, whether it's a commercial and it's a great opportunity to do things for the kids. That's the biggest thing. We're always about if we get money, what can we do for the kids? Right. And I want to just note for your listeners that if they're tuning into Apple TV, Little America, the episode with the uh, Indian kid who's doing a spelling bee, that is all Cedar Grove High School. What's it called? It's called Little America. It's Little an America. Apple TV series, Little America, and it's an anthology show. There's eight episodes, and I believe the first or second episode is uh, takes place, you know, because it's it's different uh, kids, immigrant stories, different ethnicities, and the kid that is in Cedar Grove High School is an Indian kid who lives in Utah because the oh, story takes place right. in Utah. I'll have to check that and out. It's a spelling bee, and all the school is Cedar Grove High School. That's awesome. All right, I'll have to look that out. Um, is there anything ever – here's a question for you. Is there anything ever that comes across your, your desk as far as, like, yeah, we want to film this in Cedar Grove High School? Or, you know, uh, like, is there a project that would come to you that, like, say it's, like, a horror movie, and it's, like, you know, like mm. a controversial script or whatever – does does it have to be approved by like the school and being like this is a movie where someone's killing people in the school or whatever and, you know, whatever. and it's like like we don't want that shooting here like you know what I mean because like there's there's certain folklore that could take over if the movie's a hit blah 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 is that anything that you ever think about something like that. Yeah, you know, we're a public school system and we're always conscious of content. It's not about censoring at all per se, but it's about content and it's a public school system. And you have to remember that whatever we're doing on a uh, filming basis wise is at the level of expectation that rises to a uh, properness of our school district. Right. And as a state film commissioner, obviously, I would recommend uh, multiple places to them to go, whether it's our district or a private school. But, you know, most of the times public school districts, there's a public uh, responsibility, a public code of conduct. And so we really try to follow that depending on what is going on. And uh, even on the a simpler level, it's just bad karma. <laughs> So depending on what it is. So, so if they karma. want to come film, uh, you know, Scream 10 at uh, Cedar Grove High <laughs> yeah. School, 
it's not going to happen, probably. <laughs> not going to happen. But, you Unless know, the I, check I, is, uh, oh, here you go. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, no, look, I, I'll recommend, you know, I can recommend <laughs> at least 50 p- private schools, private that, may, schools uh, that are may love down. it. Or a closed school. Right, yeah, right. totally. Yeah. They, get, they can go, go to town on it. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that's interesting. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I used to shoot my little crappy movies in Cedar Grove High School and just, you know, they're, they're horrible. But yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's a good place to, I mean, it's got a little bit of everything, I would say, you know, like the, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I haven't been there and I don't know how many years, but um, I'm sure everything is, uh, you know, updated and whatnot now. So I'm sure, yes. I'm sure it's looking great. Um, cool. So let's talk about uh, your project, Arthur Futuro. Um, so this is a half hour comedy series that you've produced. Uh, it's about a middle school student, Arthur Futuro, who's told by his future self that he has to change things in the present to save his friends. Uh, and as things are altered, comic mayhem ensues. Uh, yes. So tell us how uh, now this 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 pilot has uh, gotten into numerous festivals. Um, what is the latest one that it's in? So the latest one we're in is the Garden State Film Festival, which is New Jersey based. And uh, the great thing about the Garden State Film Festival this year is they've actually added a sixth day. And we are balancing, obviously, hybrid in person and virtual. And so the wonderful thing about the sixth day is we're going to be screening a kids block at the uh, Cranford Theater in Cranford. And so obviously following all capacity limits, it's going to be great to have it actually screened in the theater because it's the perfect age for young people. This film is the perfect age for them. And uh, and it will it's going to be fun to have it actually uh, seeing the movie live. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, like, again, I don't know. If, I don't know if my audience is the correct audience for this show per se. <laughs> but if they have kids, yeah. uh, it's definitely something that they might want to put on their radar uh, when it comes out. Um, and um, have you? Yeah, have you done live screenings with with children, uh, teenagers? Are they are they loving it when they watch it? They love it. You know, the show is made, the art of the is made for tweens, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right. It's a very specific audience. And the content of the show, even though we only filmed the pilot, is serialized. Mm-hmm. So that means that each episode adds up to another episode and to a conclusion. And one of the things we did that is because it really would be something that ultimately they may binge on a particular, um, a particular streaming service, depending on what it is. We did play at a drive-in theater in Van Nuys. Uh, That's right. This, uh, and I was uh, yes. I was disappointed because I was not in town. I was um, <laughs> in Florida getting COVID um, when that happened, so I wasn't able to go see it because yeah. I still haven't <laughs> seen it. So I'm, I, I do I do want to see it because it does look very uh, well produced and well done and everything. And it was shot in Cedar Grove High School. I'm guessing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cedar Grove High School and also in um, Cedar Grove Middle School. And one of the things we did obviously is um, I donated a sofa and. And uh, big screen TV to the uh, Cedar Grove teachers, so that in their lounge they can actually have a uh, have something proper and oh. and uh, and very very dignified. Look at that, very nice. Um, who is the yes. so who is the breakout star of this show? Is it is it the is it the actor that plays young Arthur? Yeah, he's yeah. more or less the breakout. Yeah, you know he's probably Eric the breakout Ronan. Star. Is that his name? Yes, Eric is uh, Eric's talented. You know, this was made uh, three years ago because you know mm-hmm. the process is very long and time consuming. So he's and an, so he's an adult now. Circuit, <laughs> he's, well, he's a young man. I would you know he's a young man, and uh, but all the all the four kids are really uh, right. And then there's a, f- a fifth kid who's um, Sophia. They're really all very uh, very talented. Very came with it. They're all the interesting uh, you know comedian that. It plays future Arthur is a guy named Jimmy Lauren who actually lives in California. Oh, does he? And oh, uh, cool. yeah, and so when you through the magic of filmmaking, we were out in California where we we filmed him out there, and then through you know technology, threw him on the smart board in the in the uh, film. Oh, really? So wait, he plays a teacher. He, you know, he actually plays future Arthur. Future so Arthur. Jimmy li- oh, okay. Yeah, Jimmy lives in California. He plays future Arthur, oh. and I cast him from a previous project we were working on. And so when I was out in California, because I come out so much, I uh, taped him with my DP out in uh, out in California, and obviously digitally we put him on the smart board oh, in the classroom. I want to see how that was done. That sounds cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's is, pretty now, cool. Is he in scenes by himself, or he's like integrated into the other scenes? Like, like he's integrated into the scene. So whenever the young Arthur is in the classroom talking to the smart board, talking mm-hmm. to him future self, Jimmy is on the uh, smart board in the oh, classroom. Okay, cool. All right, very cool. So, so it was doable as far as special effects. It wasn't too crazy as far as. No. You, you trying to uh, do green screen with uh, 
him or no, placing him. That next would have, to no, him. that would have been a lot. No. The, the, uh, in a, in a per- <laughs> I do love the no, aspect of this, because it's a, uh, it's kind of yeah. Like, I don't know if it's a time travel kind of sense, but it's there's there's the or there is the future self that he's talking to. And, yes, you know, I'm a big fan of like you know Back to the Future and any kind of future related stuff. So. I like well, one of the things we wanted we wanted to really convey is that, you know, we talked about this all the time as adults, you know, well, if I could change that, if I can go back to go back yeah. and change something, but we don't realize. And one of the things, one of the themes of it as kids, and it's about kids. So, and it's also geared towards kids is that you don't realize that if you change the bad thing that happened in the past, it also alters all the good stuff that happened as well, because it, it changes the entire dynamic of, uh, of all the relationships. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so that's it's, kind it's, of it's, one of the themes. It definitely. Now, now, what ha- now? If this gets picked up, or you, you guys are obviously, you know, talking to people trying to sell this thing. Um, yes. This gets picked up. Uh, you know, they want to go to series with it, whatnot. Um, you know, Eric is now fifteen or whatever. Like, do you guys right. have to recast yes. the whole show? Do you have to reshoot? Like, what? How does that work? Or do we just you accept know, that it's... he's eighteen now and we just go with it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it re- at the end of the day, it really would depend on the streaming service or the network or whoever decided they wanted to pick it up. You know, it would right. depend on what their vision is. And you know, the great thing about this business is, you know, it's always a collaborative effort. You know that. It's, so everything is collaborative. So depending on what that, what the distribution company wanted, we would address it. I'd love to keep the kids in some capacity in the production, even the adults. I want to keep everyone as much as I possibly can. And maybe it's, uh, they're as cameos or maybe they're playing a different role, something like that. That would be really fun as a homage to the original pilot. So yes, definitely. Yeah. 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 The kids always kind of get fall into that category. If it doesn't, if it doesn't happen like right away, then, you know, it's like, ah, you know, we gotta get you. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Well, well, best of luck with Arthur. Pachuro. Uh, I'm looking forward Thank to you. seeing it. Um, what, uh, what, what is the next project? Are you working on anything else currently uh, producing wise? Ab- absolutely. The next project is we recently won a, a pitch contest at this terrible film festival. And we are working on the deck for that and also working on um, having a, a short film. We're going to take the whole series. It's a series and have it uh, com- combine it, kind of condense it down into an eight minute, uh, eight to 15 minute short film. So as a way of getting attraction to it and bringing attention to it is we figure we're going to film a, uh, a short film of the condensed version of the series. Obviously, It'll just focus on a particular moment in time in the series. But a very talented writer up in Toronto is uh, actually working on it right now. Oh, very cool. Sounds great. Um, And how is everything going in Cedar Grove, New Jersey? That's our our town that I'm from and where you you reside. Is it snowing? (laughs) For the 57,000th time, we've... uh, you know, we, we really haven't gotten a lot of snow over the last couple of years, as you know. Yeah. And so now it's we're going to throw the pandemic in and then throw like, you know, maybe five or six snowstorms into the uh, into the uh, equation. It is weird when it doesn't because like, I've gone back a couple of years and I'm like, isn't it supposed to be snowing by now? And then it doesn't snow that year. And you're like and then when it hits you, you're you're not prepared for it. You're like, oh, my God, like that was like us last year in L.A. with rain. It was very rainy last winter. And it was a mess. You know, I'm not comparing it to snow, obviously, but it's the same kind of thing for us. Yeah, here. but oh, come on. When L.A. gets hit with a lot of rain, oh. you, it's not usual. It's not no, normal for you not, guys to get saturated. We're not prepared for it. No, everyone goes nuts. Um, no one leaves the house. So, you know, it's like it's like the world is ending or something. I, I will tell you, the dr- drive, the, you're horrific. You, you, you're L.A. drivers. I'm going to get a lot of shit for this. Your L.A. drivers are horrific in the rain. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's, like, it's, it's like a complete freak out. Yeah. Well, even 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 out. like it rained like two weeks ago and, you know, I started driving and I put my windshield wipers on. And then I noticed that there was something weird with my windshield wipers, like they were off centered or something like I still got to get them fixed. But I was like, oh, I haven't used these in a year almost like I was like, you know, it's like I, I didn't I didn't notice that they were broken. And now, like, I'm like, oh, I got to get that fixed. And then someone's like, yeah, do you really? It's like you use them what, like four times a year. And it's like, it's good I, you got to use them occasionally, Doug. I no, mean, I know. Come on. You no, know, I, you I, I, use the them to, I use them to clean the thing. Yeah. But like when you when you put them on for like, you know, uh, 20 minutes, Two seconds, that's when yeah, I started yeah. noticing. I'm like, oh, these are broken like there's something wrong with them, you know? <laughs> uh, that's what happens. yeah um uh cedar grove i hear yeah i hear the uh, pilgrim diner is uh, making a comeback i, I read an article it, it, about it that. is uh, you know i forget exactly what they're they're turning it into but it was vacant for like years yeah i would say two or three years and now it's massive construction going on 
If people so I'm really don't, excited about if it. If people don't know uh, what the Pilgrim Diner is in Cedar Grove, New Jersey, um, I would I would compare it uh, as the um, the Hollywood meetup spot of where uh, deals are happening. This is where Dave might go to uh, talk about uh, you know the sequel to uh, Minimal Knowledge or something. That's right, uh, which is another film he has produced. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a local diner. It's been there forever, but it's gone through stages of. Um, you know, questionable times and good times, mm-hmm. and, and now it's now it's coming. It's making a comeback. A lot of rebirthing. A lot, a lot of, rebirthing of rebirthing going on in that yeah. Jersey. Yeah, that diner. Yes. Have, have businesses in Cedar Grove been affected by the pandemic? Have you seen things close down? Uh, that kind of thing. L- Luckily, no one has closed down. The pandemic is rough all over. It was tough here. It's tough all over the country. And I think during the really bad time in March for the until July, uh, I know that I we would try to order out as much as we possibly can within reason. I mean, obviously, things are a little we know more now than we knew back then, but we were always very careful about stuff. But we would try to order out at least twice you know, twice a week to support them. So we've been, we've been lucky, but I know a lot of other businesses when you drive around town, not necessarily in town, but you drive on the highway, a lot of other businesses have not been lucky. And in malls out here, it's really sad. Uh, The stores that have closed. Yeah. No malls were, malls were kind of dead before the pandemic. I think with everyone shopping online and like you almost would go just to be like, (laughs) Oh yeah, let me see what's in a store window for a change. Right. You know, it's like, it's, yeah, it's a weird, uh, it's a weird premise to a lot of people now i would think um but you know i i'm, I'm hoping everything bounces back to, to to what it should be once this is over so you know you want to help out the small businesses for sure um all right dave so this is called the i'm an a-hole uh podcast <clears throat> yes I, yes uh, i what i do now is i ask all my guests um if there was a time in your life or a moment or a situation you found yourself in uh, that either you were an a-hole, it could be an isolated incident, uh, maybe a chunk of time in your life, uh, maybe uh, someone was one to you and you don't agree, and maybe they thought you were one or you witnessed one, anything along those lines. Um, do you have uh, a moment that you would like to share with the show? So uh, actually, actually, I do. So I was going to a meeting in uh, Hillsboro, New Jersey, which is central Jersey, and uh, I stopped at a nationally chain coffee restaurant, coffee shop to get to get some coffee. And uh, and so I'm online. It's a pretty long line. And there was a young man who was ahead of me who you could tell was special needs. There was, you know, there was an issue and I'm not making light of that. Or, right. And you could tell he was special needs and he was buying one of those, you know, press juices, you know, those press juices things. And he didn't have enough money. He only had, I forget what it what the amount was and he wanted to buy it. And the woman behind the counter was, you know, saying you don't have enough money, was not selling it to him. And it was very obvious there was an issue. And so I was just like, just give him the juice and, or, or just throw the money in or take it out of the tip jar. And we're going back and forth a little bit. I was being calm. And, and that, you know, the the clerk was like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not doing that. And so I was like, you're being an asshole. I'll just buy the young man, the juice, get, right. you know, give it to me. He's like, well, no. I said, no, no, give him the juice, give him a couple juices and, a let couple. Him ju- you know, I'll buy him. Well, you know, I'm like, it's like, <laughs> all right, Dave's buying. Everyone the juice. grab a juice and Dave's buying. <laughs> all right. So, so I, so, that clerk was an asshole and I, uh, I bought the juice for the young man because, uh, right. obviously you just shouldn't just give it to him. How There's, much, you know, how much right short are we talking here? Do you know how much short? I think it was like two or three dollars short. So, you two know, or three dollars juices are expensive. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Expen- yeah. Uh, you know, the, pre- you know, the press and, you know, the so he's, he's picking up one of these green juices and handing, handing her a yes. dollar or something. Yes. And it's like, it's like, like, it's like seven dollars. Like yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He did. He, he, he had right. way not enough money and, you know, it would be a different story if it was a person who was not easily identifiable right, of as course. a special needs so person. He, this was he, easily identifiable. He either did not, you know, understand how much yeah. it was or yeah, obviously didn't have enough or whatever. Um, now, yeah, I could see that. And now, you know, to, to, um, 
to take her side for a moment, yep. is, you know, it's her job. She's maybe not a I, fair, she's not a, she's not a manager per se. Yeah, fair enough. So do you yep, think she's yep. thinking I might be fired if I throw in five dollars and the you know the uh, the drawer is short or whatever? You know, like you know, we only have five dollars in the tip jar. It's it's already <laughs> yes. noon, and you know, I'm out of here in an hour. I didn't make yes. any money now. You know, so and it's she's like, probably <laughs> and, and back then she was probably making you know whatever a bare maybe minimum wage, maybe a little bit more. Right. You know, I. It wasn't going through my brain, but um, I, I maybe every, everyone behind the counter should chip in a dollar each and let this. Yes, poor at this guy, at this uh, point there's a, a li- at this point there's a line, and uh, yes. everyone here can afford it. There was a line. It was, it was, it was. It, I mean, it was a commotion. Like she was bringing a commotion to it, but obviously there was. A, it was. We are not moving as fast as we should be right. moving, and also right. it was way very slow. Yeah. Well, yeah, I agree. Like, yeah, I definitely have like purchased like you know, it's like I've been in line at a uh, you know a McDonald's or, or something like that, and I've uh, there's a homeless person behind me, and I'm just yes. like, I'm like, what do you want? You know, like you know, and right. buy him a burger or whatever. Um, yeah, like that kind of. And I, I will tell you, Doug. Also, I've done you know, like I'll be outside some place, whether it's a convenience store or something like that, and somebody's asking me for money, and I'm like, well, I'm not going to give you money. Is there something you want? Yes, I'd like a cup of coffee or a sandwich. Absolutely, come yeah, on in. I agree. I will, I will buy. I will buy it for you. Not a problem. I, I agree don't with give you money. Yeah, I yeah. agree with doing that. I don't like giving them money, but yeah, they, yeah, buying a, a sandwich or something like that. But here in LA, you buy them a sandwich, and then they're like, oh, is this uh, is this gluten or is this? You know, <laughs> they get very picky with what you're buying. And it's like, you know, you want it or not? You are at a McDonald's, you know, you know what they (laughs) have here. (laughs) Or is it organic? Is it it organic? (laughs) Can I get the combo with it? You know, (laughs) come on, man. Um, all right. Well, hey, yeah. you remember when with McDonald's when they used to have the hot and cold, you know, the hot stayed yeah. hot, the cold stayed cold yep, and yep. you would push it together. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. Cause it's like, cause it's like, you don't want to hold up the line and um, you know, yeah, the, it could have been the, the barista's first day or who knows, you know, it, it, you know a lot, a lot, it could have been a lot of factors and that's why I'm almost like hesitant to, you know, but it's a lot it's, of issues. It's going good on. that you didn't cause a, uh, a commotion. Over no, it. you just handled it. And, uh, yep. you know, you took care of the situation. You got the line moving. You got the uh, young man his juice. And, yep. um, you know, it was all it was all resolved with his moments. Um, so that, yeah, that was, it was it was, that was yeah, good it was thinking not, on your part. <laughs> yeah. And, and why not? You know, do, do you know, feel good for the day. Do do do, do the right thing. Pay it forward, because at some right. point you may need it paid forward. Exactly. And uh, and, that, and that is a different that it's a very specific kind of asshole story, I would say, because you are thinking that, yeah, the barista is being a little bit of one. And, you know, mm-hmm. you don't you don't want to you almost don't want to create other assholes from showing up because there is going to be that guy in the line, you know, two people behind you. That's like, hurry up. Come on. I'm late. You know, like <laughs> and now he's an asshole because of this whole thing. You know, so it's like yes. it, it kind of multiplies. Like if people are rushing, it's a morning kind of thing. People are waiting to uh you know, get their coffee and whatnot. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a good thing that you uh, stepped in there and uh, saved the day as far as. Uh, <laughs> Getting, well, you make a good point because juice. it does multiply. It does. It's the same. It's the same thing as being in traffic, you know, or like, yes. like late lately, I've had the, I've had the situation when you're in a parking garage and you're trying to leave and you got to pay to get out or validate mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. ticket, and then the thing doesn't work, and you're the asshole at the gate, and there's 20 cars behind you. And it's not working. Yeah, uh, like, like I, this has happened to me like twice in the past six months. I think where like I've had to press the call button, and then the person has to come oh. down and open the gate, and everyone behind you is just ah, pissed you know, off. You, you, well, you are. You theoretically are the one. Right. Everyone's waiting for you. Everyone's waiting for me. But I'm like, why isn't this stupid gate working? Like, I paid the thing, I paid the ticket, or I right. put, I put my card in, and it won't read it now. Like, there's some kind of mechanical error. But like I can't blame it on the machine being the asshole. I'm the asshole because I haven't figured out how to do it. And when you back up, you can't flat, back up. You poke you, your tires. You know, you rip your tires. You can't even back up because there's cars behind you already. They're all uh, waiting to get out. So like everyone's got to back out. But then the guy <laughs> comes down to fix the thing, and he's not the asshole because he's just like you know. And then, but he won't even let you go. He'll be like you know, it's five dollars, and it's like well, I only have my right. card. I've been in the thing where I'm like, I have my car. I have a dollar. Or I have my car. Or car what, do, right? what do you want? Yes. Like, yes. you know, what's going to yes. work out? <laughs> like, I've gotten into arguments I, with these these gate people. 
Well, it's a jo- I'm a joke. And they joke, you know, whenever I go out with folks, I'm always putting it on the card. I'll always use a debit yeah. card. And they're like, you never carry cash. And I'm like, never. no. no. I, I, it's cash is out. The debit card. Cash is it's out. out. It's gone. People don't and want it. during the pandemic. Oh, yes, people don't, don't want it because of the pandemic. Even even tipping people. It's like, here's my Venmo. And you press the thing. And it's like, you know, people would yep. rather have that now than, than, you know, a $5 bill or whatever. And I get it. Cause I agree. It's, yes. It's dirty. And you don't want to, you know, touch it and get a disease <laughs> and whatnot. Um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful, you know? Um, here's a question for you that I'd like to ask you. Um, sure. Since you are a, a movie producer, movie buff, we both love the movies. Um, <laughs> what movie character would you, uh, most like to be like if you could be? Wow. Holy guacamole. Jeez. You know, I probably, I would probably say my movie character would be uh, Jimmy Stewart and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Jimmy Stewart and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. All right, that's interesting. I don't think I've seen that. Mr. Smith you know, goes so to he, he's a leg, he's a legislator, and uh, he has to do a filibuster for to get his point across on the issue that he believes in so dearly. Hmm. And you know, if you know anything about the, our legislature, our government, you know the filibuster, and he talks. I forget how long he talks for, but he talks for a really long time to convince the rest of the Senate to uh, to um, see his way on an issue. And so uh, I would say that that's my probably my biggest movie character is because when I'm passionate about something or believe in something, a lot of times you have to convince everybody to uh, go along with yeah. doing the right thing and the belief. That is interesting. It's an interesting choice. Uh, I will have to watch that. I haven't seen it. But um, yeah, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, you are you are part of the, the Board of Ed in Cedar Grove. You know, you, mm-hmm. you are, are you passionate about getting projects done, producing movies, getting uh, things done for the school. So, yeah, you do have to convince and talk to people and make your point and all, all the vote. time. So that's that's an interesting choice. Yeah. If you relate to him uh, in that way, I can see that, you know as an inspiration of sorts, uh, you know, going, yeah. after, going after your, your dream projects, movies, or, you know, board of ed, or just being, just being, uh, you know, the, the man of Cedar Grove that you are, I would say. <laughs> you are the face. I think you are the face of Cedar Grove right now. You, you are. Oh, yeah. If there, if there was a, uh, if there was a CNN in Cedar the Grove, uh, a local news, you know, I don't even know if the local channel 20 or whatever it is now is still up and running. But yeah. I feel like yeah. I feel like you would be on there every night, uh, you know, as a, a correspondent or something. The, the beautiful thing about technology, my friend, is uh, you there's you know, there's so many ways you can get stuff to kids and yeah. to the community about things. And, you know, it's always about being positive because, uh, you know, you know, we talk about social media. The bad thing is, is everyone just vents. Right. And uh, it's like a lot harder to be positive about all the wonderful things that are going on. So, yeah. So uh, yeah, so that's, channel twenty is that's true. Channel exist, channel twenty easier. was the uh, public access show, a channel in Cedar Grove, kind of like where you would find your uh, your Wayne's World. Uh, kind of, I, I used yes. to try to get shows on there as a as a teenager. Um, and this is way before YouTube and anything, obviously, because now now channel twenty is obsolete. I would think. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. It was it was fun just you know trying to do productions and stuff like that. I remember. And, and if you and if you remember, my friend, that uh, we took it off of. I you stole the idea, not stole the idea. I actually borrowed the idea from the producer of um, Dan Farah, who went to uh, Maplewood South Orange School District, uh-huh. who also produced Ready Player One, one of my interns. Right, right. We we did the music video show. Remember, we, yes, would, we yes. would host the music video show. We would edit all the music Some, videos Somehow, we, yeah, you had gotten all these, like, uh, you know, either beta or VHSs of, uh, like, yes. Will, Will Smith's new music video or something. And, yes. And we yes. were trying to shoot segments around town <laughs> and then, yes, yeah, do our own uh, uh TRL or whatever, like kind yes, of thing. Yes, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> I think yes. we did a couple so episodes. You were the Arizona. host. I was the host. Yes, we did. And uh, we would yeah. go to like the local new uh, lunch spot that just opened up and promoted, and then cut to Will <laughs> Smith uh, getting jiggy with it. Which, yes, <laughs> which yes. now looking back, it's like I don't, I don't know what the audience was, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, but but yeah, give yourself credit here though. Public access was the place you got went to get stuff. Absolutely, you know, it, it's not like you know people think we, we have YouTube and all the obviously every social media platform possible to get information. But back then, no. if you wanted to know about schools closing outside of a telephone chain, you yeah. know, you went to you went to uh, you went to it the was, public access it channel. Was, it was amazing for me 
just being involved in that because I, w- I used to make these like little films in high school, uh, you know, editing on two VCRs and uh, a couple like, you know, audio, vi- yes. audio video wires and a character <clears throat> generator that was a piece of shit. That's know? right. And it was yeah. like, I was like, this is amazing. I can put a mu- music and titles on this. And then I would make this film. And then I remember trying to get permission to show one of them on Channel 20, the, the one I made about suicide, which was like, yes. you know, it was a drama, but it was like, yes. you know, there was an important, uh, you know, uh, information at the end of it uh, there was a point uh, there was a, uh, a point of view a story to tell an awareness um, and and somehow they were like yeah you could show it on channel 20 and I was like okay awesome and I think I had like two showings like Thursday and Friday night <laughs> seven o'clock so I would like press the play on the, the tape and then I'd like be like oh my god it's live right now across the whole yeah, town right. and maybe the next town and it's like I don't know I never got you know I don't know who's watching it you weren't able to get stats or anything like that but it's like no. it's like like, oh, this is like this is more people that can see it, you know. And now, right. you, now you just have YouTube, which you just throw it up and you get you know a million views if you're lucky. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So and you don't time, need anyone's permission. No, times have changed for sure, and uh, it's it's so interesting being a part of that because these kids these days now I sound old, you know they'll they'll, they'll never know what that is like or have no. that kind of experience as far as you know trying to get things out there is they have everything on their phone tip of a you know press a button and it's out there so and, and Doug and think about you really had to be dedicated well you were we were you really had to be dedicated to doing it because it was a process oh yeah and it wasn't like an easy process it was a pain in the butt process yeah. in getting it done yeah you really you really wanted to you had to have really wanted to do it because it was like you know, I'm going to shoot this stuff and then I'm going to edit like editing with the two VCRs or like the deck that they had down there. Like that was so, so much work. And it was like, it was a lot of work. It was easier because you had like a machine helping you. But like now it's like everyone has final cut and a, in a Mac and you make mm-hmm. a movie and you make a movie. You don't even have to Absolutely, know what you're doing. Yeah. You watch a YouTube video, you know what you're doing. You know, it's, it's, it's a different world and it's a very um, different world. Totally different. I, I only imagine what it would be like if we grew up with the technology that we have now. Uh, as as uh, the filmmakers, you know that we that we are having that power at a young age. Um, you know, I I missed it by fifteen years. I'd say, you know, yeah, that's about <laughs> that's about right. Yes, 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 yes. I always joke because, like, you know, going to college and studying filmmaking, I was like the last error of like using film, splicing it, cutting it. Like, I learned how to do that, and then like the next year when I left and graduated, everything was digital. And I was it like, off. I was like, wow! I have to relearn like, everything I just learned is so obsolete. And uh, it, yeah, and 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 you know. and and you know, while we love film and stuff like that, but it's the the, the how you make movies is you know no. the, the technology of it is radically if you, shifted. Yeah, if you want to splice and cut things together, you're doing it as a hobby these days. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, Dave, the way we end this show is uh, yes. No, most people just state their name and they say, "I'm an asshole," um, and, and, then, and then you go in peace. You've redeemed yourself. <laughs> Everyone, does I'll, I'll, Everyone does it. Everyone does it. It's all in I'm jest. Gonna, uh, I know. Okay. My name is Dave Schoner, and I'm an asshole. <laughs> there you go, folks. Dave Schoner. He's redeemed himself. He's an asshole. Oh, jeez. But we love him. Oh, boy. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. Um, all right. Well, Dave, I want to thank you for taking the time today and being on the show. I appreciate it. Um, his uh, Arthur Futuro, uh, folks, check this out when it comes out. Uh, if you have kids, you're going to want to sit them down and watch it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, Dave has, is, is working on multiple productions in New Jersey uh, that are coming through there. Um, and uh, if you are lucky enough to drive through Cedar Grove, New Jersey, you might see him look for uh, the man with the, uh, the great mustache that, uh, <laughs> that is Mr. Cedar Grove himself, Dave Schoner. All right, Dave, anything else you want to put out there? No, where, where, thank you where can much. people can people follow you on social media? Are you on there? Oh, so wanna... they can follow. Um, I'm on uh, Twitter, D W S C H O N E R on Twitter and on Instagram. I'm Jersey movie man. So uh, Jersey with a Z. So uh, <laughs> there you go. 
Jersey there you go. The jersey it's with a Z. That's, that's, Z yeah. yeah. That's what I used too when I named my Jersey I had Productions back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I just like, let's make it a little different. Yeah, there you go. You got you to stand out. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, agreed. All right. Well, Dave Schoner, thanks for coming on. Um, folks, make sure you follow us on uh, Apple Podcasts. The YouTube channel is at Doug Bass Comedy. Um, and uh, follow us on Instagram at Asshole Podcast and at Doug Bass Comedy. Um, and, um, you know, um, remember, folks, don't be an a hole. But if you are, talk about it and laugh about it. My name's Doug Bass. Dave Schoner has been with us today. Uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Bye.